Stand in solidarity. We shouldn't have never got here. No life matters until black lives matter. We shouldn't have never let them divide us up like this. Who would have thought 50, 55 years later, we'll still be talking about racial unrest and protesting. I don't agree with all the burning and looting, but I think it is about time that we do have equality in this country. And especially in the Black Lives Matter movement, let's not get lost on what we're there for peaceful protesting for equality. Coach Fry was a great man. Please accept the flag, the symbol of our appreciation, every level of honorable and faithful service to our country. Levi, he called me when he loved me, and when I was in trouble, he called me Jerry. But I knew him as a coach and a father figure, and Coach Fry is a great man, and he was one of God's greatest gifts to a lot of us. May he rest in peace, and God bless him, and I love him forever. Beating up the night sticks. Bloody Sunday, just one of the indelible reminders of a time in this country that define a man's value by the color of his skin, the Civil Rights Movement. A decade-long struggle to end legalized racial discrimination and segregation against blacks in this country. The boundaries of America's discrimination didn't stop at the borders of the South, including racial segregation in collegiate sports. In 1965, SMU was one of eight universities competing in the Southwest Conference. Of those eight universities, not a single black football player on any team's roster. But Mustang's head football coach, Hayden Fry, had a different agenda. Recruiting and signing the first black football scholarship athlete of the Southwest Conference, Jerry Levias. Considered by many the Jackie Robinson of the Southwest, Levias describes his years at SMU simply as a living hell. It was a nightmare. You weren't treated equal. You were lonesome, being spit on. You know, you called the N-word. You would be called an African or be called a monkey. The times that people would call me, I'd look at them and smile and say, the best one you've ever seen. Only time has passed. The vivid memories remain. The virus recalls his worst injury on the football field. And I was on the ground and just about to get up and one of the players jumped in my back with his knee, wedged two vertebrae and cracked a rib. I remember him being punched, but it wasn't in the eyes <laughs> or the nose. It was, it was in a lower, a midsection area. Despite the odds, Levias led the Mustangs in 1966 to their first conference title in 18 years. I only touched the ball my sophomore year 66 times and uh, led the, uh, not necessarily led the conference in receiving, but in scoring and everything else. I used to joke around and call him old flypaper hands. Once it hit his hands, it was caught. Levias is number 23, wasn't coincidental, it was personal. The brainchild behind number 23 was my grandmother. And Grandma Ella Levias's strong-hearted, faith-based demeanor quickly had the attention of Coach Fry. And he had a long talk with my grandmother, and she said that I want my grandson to be like David fighting Goliath, you know, and it came from Psalms 23 in the Bible. Even though I walk through the shell of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Oh, and there was one other small thing that Levias' grandmother demanded of Coach Fry. And before every game, 
Coach Fry made sure that I talked to my grandmother and she gave us a prayer. Including one game that found Levias and Fry under the stadium bleachers in a phone booth with no money. Thank goodness for a band member at the concession stand. When you say, you don't need that popcorn, let me have the money. <laughs> so he put the money in the phone booth and uh, we called my grandmother. Much like his grandma, Levias relied on his faith to get him through most days. On the back of his dorm room door, he posted and recited daily the serenity prayer. 27 words that he would soon memorize. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage and the rely that I can in the wisdom. Especially in the most troubling of times, as was the case against crosstown rival TCU. The one game that he admits he lost total control of his emotions after having his helmet ripped away, spat on, and held to the ground. If I'd have had a gun, really, I would have shot somebody. I lost it, and I dared anybody to touch me. And in true Levias style, he channeled his emotions until his next touch of the ball, a touchdown, but unlike any other. That was one of the worst touchdowns that I have ever run in my entire life because I did it out of hate. Hate does not hurt the other person as much as it hurts you. Despite the opposition, Levias proved he didn't need everyone behind him. He simply needed the right people behind him. Many in the black community did very much appreciate what Jerry was doing here at SMU. The friends were the maids, the people at SMU that cleaned up the rooms and emptied the garbage. Understandably so, Levias faced yet another battle, depression. However, he found renewed hope following a brief meeting on campus he could have never, ever expected. Be on the campus of this great institution of learning. I went into this room and there was Dr. King. I had a chance to shake his hand. He says, uh, I've heard great things about you. And he says, but I want to tell you, always keep your emotions in control. It's been 54 years since Levias met with Dr. King here at SMU and decades of changes to the game that he once played. But there is one thing that remains the same. Every year a coach here chooses a player to wear Jerry Levias' number 23 in honor of what he stood for and the hardships that he had to overcome while playing college football. I think every black athlete would be very grateful that he didn't give up the struggle. It's taken over a half century but Levias has forgiven, but not forgotten the physical and emotional scars that will haunt him for a lifetime. And I don't have any animosity in my heart for them because as my grandmother used to say, bless them for they know not what they do. And I told my grandmother, these white people are trying to kill me, Grandma. <laughs> the animosity and struggle only served to make Levias stronger encouraged by one of his biggest supporters, his coach, who was like a second father and advisor and the friend that he recently lost, Hayden Fry. He had such an impact on my life. The lessons that I learned about people and what I've learned about uh, how to deal with people. But I think the thing that needs to be done is everybody just try to get along and love one each other because it is about time protesting would end. Free damn free! But just treat everybody fair. I think this is the thing that we'll be looking for in the days to head. When they Get a chance to look at my tombstone. It's going to be the date of my birth and the, the day that I passed away. And it's going to be a dash that it says, I made a difference. In Dallas, I'm Arnold Payne.